Hey everybody, welcome, my name is Caleb, and in this lesson we're going to learn how to work with SQLite from a Node application. We're going to use a package called Better SQLite 3, and this will allow us to very easily work with an SQLite database. Before we get started, I wanted to share a link to an intro course to the software development career. This will give you everything you need to know to get started in software development, and will introduce a lot of good concepts for bettering your development career. I also wanted to mention I have a link to my website where you can get a lot of the videos I have here on YouTube ad-free and downloadable. So if you're looking for a different viewing experience, you can check that out as well. So this is the package we're going to use, Better SQLite 3. And the important thing to understand about this is that it is a synchronous API, and they've found that this actually gives higher speed and performance for SQLite 3. And ultimately it makes it easier to work with as well. So you don't have to worry about using async functions everything is going to be synchronous now there is an asynchronous option so if you just search SQLite 3 there is an asynchronous non-blocking SQLite 3 bindings package so you can check this one out as well but this is not what we're going to be using in this video in terms of popularity this one's at 303,000 downloads a week and better SQLite is about 116,000 so it's not quite as popular but I've used this and I've preferred it over the other options. So if you're just jumping into SQLite, then you'll probably want to check out my intro to SQLite video that I just released. That'll give you all the foundations that you need to understand how to work with an SQL and SQLite database. Other than that though, we're going to start by opening a terminal. And I actually haven't even downloaded Node on this computer yet, so I'm working on a new computer. So I'm gonna download Node from nodejs.org and go for the Mac OS installer. Cool, so I got that installed. And from a terminal, we should be able to say node. This will start an interactive session and you can close out of that with control C twice. And we should now be able to use NPM to install packages. Before we do this though, we will want to start a project. So to do this, I'm going to go to a location where I would want this project. So I'll just go into my node directory and then I will create a new folder and I'll call this SQLite. And then from here, I will change directory into SQLite and say npm init-y. This creates a package.json which describes our node project and you can find that in this folder. Let's now open this in an editor. So I will open this path in Visual Studio Code and then I will say, yes, I trust the authors. And here is our project. Now from here, I will execute any new commands in this terminal. And the first thing I'm going to do is say npm install better SQLite 3. And now you'll notice some changes over here and in package.json we will have that dependency. Now one quick change I'm going to make is in this package.json I'm going to add type module. And this will allow us to use import statements in our code. So we will now go over into our files, create a new folder source and create an app.js. And then we can say import database from better SQLite 3. Now we'll say const db is a new database, passing in the name of the database, so we can just call this app.db, for example. Now to start using this, we will create a query. So we'll say const query, and this will just be a string. I'm gonna use backticks so I can split this up across multiple lines very easily. And then I can define the query here create table, users, and then we'll open the parentheses and we'll create the columns here. So I have an ID, which will be of type integer, which will be the primary key. We'll have a name, which can be string, not null. And we'll say username, which will also be a string, not null, but it'll also be unique. Now to execute this, we'll say db dot, and there should be an exec passing in this query. So it looks something like this. And then to run this inside of package.json, it's good practice just to create a script. So we'll add one in here, we'll call it start. And the value for this will just be node source app.js. And look like that. Then when we say npm run, and then that command name start, it'll execute node source app.js. And we just get this in the terminal. We don't get anything printed out, but all we really did was create this table. And if we open our files, we should now see an app.db. So if we delete that and run it again, you can see that up here. All right, cool. So we created our table. Now let's learn how we can insert some data. What we will do is we will just comment this section out. I'm going to keep it here and just continue building in this file. 
So then I can kind of look back at everything we've done. So we'll start by creating some data and I'm going to create this as an array with multiple objects inside. So let's just create three users and then we'll provide values for the name and username right here. We can skip the ID that should be automatic. So we'll just say name Caleb comma username Calker name Brandy username brand and finally name Eli username Eli123 and just for consistency I'm gonna capitalize that so we have three values that we're going to insert into the database now the way we do this is interesting we first prepare a statement and it's gonna look something like this we'll say const and then we'll create a variable insert data and we'll use DB prepare passing in a query so in this query we will say insert into the table name users values and then actually we're going to only provide values for name and username for values we will use question mark comma question mark and this will allow us to provide a value later and it'll substitute it into this query safely. So this eliminates the risk of SQL injection. You don't wanna use concatenation manually. You always want to use whatever system the database has to avoid SQL injection, which is, by the way, if you are not familiar, it's just a way that a malicious user could trick the database into executing some other command by appending certain values here to end this query and then execute some other query like deleting the data. So now to actually insert the data, we will go to the next line and we will iterate through the data. So data dot for each, and this will take a callback function. So what do we want executed for each element with the parameter being that actual element. So we'll say D for the element, or you could give it a more descriptive name such as the user. And inside of here, we will invoke that query. So insert data dot run and then we pass in the values that we want to use to substitute in where these question marks are. So that's pretty easy. We would just take user.name and user.username. And that's pretty much it. Although it is convention if you're going to be doing this within an application to actually close the connection at the end. But this is not a huge deal since we're just executing a file and it ends. But just so you know, that's best practice. So we will run this. Again, we're not seeing anything, but I'll show you how to select the data here in a moment. But we should now, if we run it again, get an error because we have a unique constraint on the username. So when we try to use calcur again, it should complain saying, hey, you've already tried that. So we hit run and you can see we get an exception, unique constraint failed users.username. So you can see that that is working. And just to show you that manually, we can say sqlite3.db and then select everything from users. And you can see here are the users. We talked a lot more of how to use the terminal interface in our SQLite intro video, so definitely check that out. But I'm gonna close out of this with control C twice. Okay, cool, so we've learned how to insert data. Now let's learn how we can select data from within this. So let's learn now how we can retrieve all of the users from this table. We will craft another query. So we'll say const query, and then we'll just pass in the value here. Select everything from users. And we can actually retrieve the users. So we'll say const users. So we'll prepare this with db dot prepare, passing in the query. And then we can invoke on this dot all. And then we'll just console log this. Let's try this out. We will clear and run. And you can see all of our data is returned in an array. You could then send this to the user in an API or to whatever you want with it. So that's how you retrieve all the users. Now let's learn how to retrieve a single user be fairly similar. I'm also just going to write the query inline. So we'll say db.prepare passing in a query and then we'll just say dot get. The query will look something like select everything from users where ID is some value. And then this value will be provided here. So let's just provide a hard coded value of one. This is ultimately going to return the user. So we'll say const user and then we'll console log it. So it looks something like this, console log user, run. 
and we can see we get a single user. So we've used a few variation of commands just to make sure we're all on the same page here. Prepare is used to prevent SQL injection and that's when you provide a value here. Pretty similar in this scenario, we just didn't provide a value, but you still use db.prepare and pass in that query. Run is used when you don't really expect a return result. You don't need the data given back, so this is done for inserts, for example. And this is executed for each element. And then exec is often used for create table statements and things like that. You can, of course, read the documentation, which is pretty extensive, so I'm probably not covering it fully, but I think you guys get the idea. I'm just trying to give you an introduction so you have something to build off of. You can build on these concepts to create a very basic API. So for example, npm install express. I'm going to copy the express.js hello world example and then just modify it slightly. I'm going to temporarily comment this out, paste this down here, change this to import express from express. And then for this res.send, we'll change it to res.json, passing in an object with the user's property. And then this can be retrieved. So we will take these two lines here, paste that here, uncomment, and then pass in users. So npm run start. Example app listening on port 3000. We'll go to localhost 3000 and there are our users from the database. If this content interests you, then I highly encourage you to check out my course careers course on backend development. So if you are interested in learning everything you can about Node, SQLite, Postgres, and other databases, and how to put this all together in a backend application, then check the link down below to get the free intro course careers course and I highly encourage you to check that out. This was just recently launched and we've already had one person successfully land a full stack engineering role by going through the backend software development course. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful and hopefully this gave you enough to get started. Obviously this wasn't designed to be fully comprehensive, really just trying to get you going in that right direction, knowing how to start executing SQL from a node application. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for upcoming content. I'll see you in the next one.